You might think addiction looks like a needle or a bottle or a pill, but today it more likely looks like a smiling cartoon on a cereal box. You never hand your child a cigarette. You never serve your spouse a line of cocaine as a part of a complete nutritional breakfast. But every single day, you eat ultra-processed foods, which companies engineered as well as they could to be as biologically addictive as cocaine or cigarettes. Ultra-processed foods look harmless, bright packaging, familiar flavors, childhood memories. But scientists are creating chemical cocktails deliberately designed to hijack your brain, and then they're tying them to emotional cues. You see, your brain's reward system runs on dopamine. And when you eat something rewarding, dopamine spikes. That's normal. It's biology. But ultra-processed foods don't follow nature's rules. They bypass them or overwhelm them. According to Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist Michael Moss in Hooked, the brain responds to ultra-processed foods within milliseconds faster than cigarettes and cocaine. That's because your body breaks down and absorbs those foods with such speed and intensity that your brain's reward circuits don't just light up, they blow up. Think about that. You bite into a chip. It's already hitting your bloodstream. Salt hits your tongue, fat melts across your palate, and sugar taps into the brain's pleasure centers all at the same time. It feels good, but only for a moment. And then comes the crash. Because unlike real food, which nourishes and sustains, ultra-processed food creates an artificial dopamine spike. Your brain, which is just hungry for balance, pulls it right back down. And what follows is an intense craving, not for nutrients, but for another hit. It's not hunger. It's like neurochemical withdrawal. There's a reason they say you can't eat just one. A 2023 review in the British Medical Journal found that 14% of adults and 12% of children show eating patterns that meet the clinical definition of addiction. That's on par with alcohol and tobacco. Let that sink in. Nearly one in seven adults is hooked on food the way an alcoholic is hooked on vodka. But unlike alcohol or tobacco, you're not going to find ultra-processed food behind a counter. You'll find it in your kid's lunchbox, the office break room, or right in the checkout aisle. And if you're still thinking, well, I just need more discipline, you're already in the trap. I was there too. I used to weigh 300 pounds and I ate a lot of those foods. Ultra-processed foods seem like harmless snacks but they're chemically engineered to hijack your brain's reward system faster than cocaine. Therefore, many people get stuck in addiction loops and you don't even know it. Experts define addiction by a few key criteria. Intense cravings, loss of control, continued use despite harm, and withdrawal symptoms. Ultra-processed foods check every single box. A study in JAMA Psychiatry showed that people with food addiction light up the same brain regions as substance abusers, hyperactive reward circuits combined with weak inhibitory control. In plain English, the brain's saying more when the brakes are failing. And a 2018 Obesity Reviews Journal published data showing that both animals and humans experience withdrawal symptoms when they stop eating ultra-processed foods. And the big food industry didn't do this by accident. They did it by design. In fact, the same people who got millions of Americans hooked on cigarettes also made your cereal. In the 1980s, Tobacco giants Philip Morris and R.J. Reynolds acquired the major food companies, you know, Kraft, General Foods, and Nabisco, and that allowed tobacco firms to dominate America's food supply. Yes, they reaped billions in sales from popular brands like Oreo cookies, Kraft macaroni and cheese, and Lunchables. And Big Tobacco didn't just bring their money, they brought their playbook. Tobacco companies built cigarette addiction on three things, rapid brain stimulation, repeated behavior, and psychological manipulation. The same blueprint now drives ultra-processed foods. The colors, the smells, the way the wrapper crinkles. They even engineered the mouthfeel to light up your brain like a slot machine. And at the center of it all is this bliss point. It's an exact formula of sugar, salt, and fat that maximizes dopamine and shuts off satiety. When a company hits the bliss point, you never feel full. You just feel rewarded. And that's when the loop begins. These companies run focus groups to test the perfect crunch. Scientists play with size and shape of salt crystals so they hit your taste buds faster. Even the smell of the food is dialed in to trigger childhood memories and emotional associations. That's not flavor. It's neuromarketing. So they take away your conscious choice in the matter. You think you're choosing the chips or the cereal. But the moment you walked into the store, they've already made the decision for you at a deep biological level. 
They prime your brain before you ever take a bite. Now, food companies have spent decades using the same psychological tricks as big tobacco to remove your free will. And when it happens, you don't even know what's happening. Once you're hooked, the system convinces you it's your fault. You feel the cravings, the loss of control, the emotional crash. And instead of looking at the food, you look at yourself. Why don't I have more discipline? Why can't I just stop eating this junk? That shame becomes its own form of fuel. And guess what makes you feel better, at least temporarily? The same foods that cause the crash. But food scientists built these foods to override your self-control. In fact, for me to learn about this, I hired someone to drop me off in a cave all by myself for four days where I had no food and no people because I knew I would be really unhappy when I didn't eat food. That's how addictive it can be. In fact, Michael Moss in Salt Sugar Fat explains how food scientists grind salt finer so it dissolves faster on your tongue. They restructure fats so they melt exactly at body temperature, which delivers the maximum impact on your pleasure centers. Those tweaks drastically change how fast your brain lights up. And the faster the stimulation, the more addictive the substance becomes. That's the core principle of every drug, and it applies to food. The faster it hits your brain, the harder it hits your reward system, and the harder it is to resist. To make matters worse, you probably ate those foods early in life. You're not just dealing with cravings. You're dealing with deeply encoded memories, birthday parties, school lunches, comfort after a tough day. That creates a form of learned dependency that sticks for life unless you actively rewire it. So no, you're not weak. You're wired. And blaming yourself for being stuck in an engineered addiction cycle only strengthens the grip of the addiction. You've probably heard the advice a thousand times, just eat healthy. But what they don't tell you is that food companies spend 80% of their billion dollar marketing budgets promoting ultra processed foods. And they're not marketing to informed adults. They're targeting kids. American adults get over half their calories from ultra processed foods. For kids, it's closer to 67%. This isn't just a health issue. It's political, economic, and systemic. If a product hijacks your brain, destroys your health, and drives national disease statistics, why are we calling it food? 